is whatever it is that you want to do. You want to do it massively. I have a friend who was telling me that his sales were down. I said, well, how many phone calls you make a day? He said, 25. I said, double them. Make 50 or 75 or 100. He said, oh, man, that's just too much. Said, what do you mean too much? You behind on your bills? You talking about too much? You know one way to get back on your feet real quick is to miss two car payments? There's no competition out here. Decide that you're going to push yourself. Most people won't do that. Most people give up on themselves easily. You know the human spirit is powerful? There's nothing as powerful. It's hard to kill the human spirit. They asked Benjamin Disraeli, a man who became the head of a country at a time when Jews were not allowed out after 10 o'clock. He said, how did you do it? How do you achieve it against such great odds? He said, nothing can resist the will of a people that will stake even their existence on the extent of their purpose for good. That when you have a made up mind, when you decide that you want to do something, I was reading something the other day, he said the power to hold on in spite of everything, the power to endure, this is the winner's quality. The hunger, the ability to face defeat again and again without giving up. This is a winner's quality. You have that quality within you. When you're hungry, you don't care about the facts. You don't care about the art. There's greatness in you. And you've got to learn how to tune out the critics outside and the critic inside. And since I'm going to do this, I'm going to harness my will. And I'm not going to let anything stop me. I deserve this. I'm going to do it until. And this friend, I told him, says, start increasing your calls. I said, I make a hundred calls a day. The other thing is that if you want something, you have got to be relentless. You've got to learn how to become resourceful. You've got to learn how to become creative. When crises strike in your life, and in the Chinese language, crises mean danger, but it also means opportunity. And this is an opportunity for you to grow. And you've got to be so relentless, regardless of what comes down the pike, that you're always looking for a way to get over, always looking for a way that you can break through, and always looking for a way that you can strike a telling blow. Live your life with passion, with some drive. You've got to watch the, the people, the relationships that you develop, have people of, of, of kindred mindsets. If you're around folk who are dead and negative all the time, they will affect you. You want people that are around you that have smiles on their faces, looking good. So you've got to watch your countenance, watch your face, have an uplifted expression, watch your body posture. All of these things affect you psychically. You've got to be the kind of person that you are fearless. You are unstoppable. And because you are unstoppable, because you've got power that you haven't even begun to use yet, you owe it to yourself to release your brakes. How many of you have the experience of pulling out of your driveway and you're mashed on the accelerator and the car was just going, and couldn't move, and you're mashed harder and it couldn't move, and then you discovered you had your emergency brakes on, and then you release those emergency brakes and it goes, choo! Have you ever had that experience before? Most of us go through life with our brakes on, holding back not giving all that we have, not sharing all of ourselves. Most of us go to our grave still holding on rather than releasing it. What are some of those things that, that keep us from releasing it? Because of past experiences, past defeats, past pain. We look back, well, it didn't work out then. It probably won't work out now. Many people get confused their performances with who they are. They, that if my speech tonight doesn't work, it doesn't mean that I'm a bad speaker. It means that what I did didn't work tonight. And I've got to separate what I do from who I am. And I've got another shot. See, the last chapter to your life has not been written yet. And it doesn't matter about what happened yesterday. 
It doesn't matter about the things that you've done that you feel guilty about. If you wouldn't do it today, you're convicting an innocent person. Something I'd like to share some ideas and thoughts with you. I'm not asking that you believe anything that I say. I'm not asking that you agree with me. And if there's something that I say that can fit and work for you, I say use it. If not, discard it and let it be. One of the things I have realized, and many of us have, that if you want something out of life, if you want to change yourself, if you want to acquire something, if there's some goal that you want to reach, that is really not easy as some people will make us feel. That living your dream, changing your behaviors, overcoming negative habits, it's challenging. It's hard. That living alone is just very difficult. And once we begin to come to grips with the fact that living is difficult, life is very challenging. I heard a song once by a guy named Dipples called, If It Ain't One Thing, It's Another. You will never ever have a problem-free moment in life. And there's always something. So how do we begin to nurture that hunger? What are the characteristics or the qualities of people that are hungry? What will it take for me to get some of the things that I want? And being hungry for those things. Number one, you've got to work on yourself. It's very important that you engage in an ongoing process to develop you. Spend more time on yourself than what you've been spending. It's very important, you owe that to yourself. I was reading a book by Og Mandino called The University of Success. Read one line, gave me a chill. I didn't have to read anything else in the book. He said, many of us never realize our greatness because we become sidetracked by secondary activity. We spread ourselves too thin, don't know how to say no. And we find ourselves doing all kinds of things and never ever have time to do those things that we need to do to work on ourselves. And then there goes a second, there goes another second, there goes another second, and we can't stop and hold time. And before you know it, you wake up one day and you're behind on your dreams and your bills. So decide that you're gonna take some time to work on you, that you deserve that from yourself, that your life deserves some prime time because you are creating your own production. As Michael Todd would say, you are the star of your show, you are the director, you are writing the script, and you will determine whether your life is a smash office hit or flop. You determine that. Working on yourself, talking to yourself, that's so very important. Overcoming the negative conversation, that inner dialogue that's going on all the time, all the time, even when you don't want it to be there. You can't stop yourself right now from thinking. You can't do it. It's going on. And so learning how to empower yourself, part of doing that is standing up to yourself. You've got to stand up inside yourself sometimes and say, shut up. You've got to do this. I was going to give a presentation and this voice inside of me saying, you can't do this. You don't have everything it takes. I shut up. You'll get scared sometimes. Your mind will go blank on you. Some people you will allow to unnerve you. And you wonder, what's wrong with me? I'm not crazy. That's why you've got to learn to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to stand up inside yourself. Working on yourself, watching that inner dialogue, it will determine the quality of your life. When you're working on something you want to achieve, you have got to stand up to that voice. You've got to sell yourself every day on your abilities, on what you're doing, on the goal that you want to reach. You've got to sell yourself every day, every day, every day. According to your level of belief, it will manifest itself in what you're doing. Whatever we have right now, whatever we're demonstrating in our lives is a result of what we believe subconsciously that we deserve. And part of increasing that belief level is that you have got to convince yourself every day 
You've got to sell to yourself. I, I do a lot of training for many corporations and I conduct sales seminars and I've heard all kind of guys doing techniques and training um, people techniques of how to close sales and how to work with and, and begin to control the, the sale and how to ask for the close. Let me share something with you. You can learn all the techniques in the world. If you don't believe in yourself, it won't happen for you. I learned all of it. So that's why I do a training called Focus on the Seller. You've got to focus on you. And as you convince you, as you sell yourself, every day, every day, every day, you will begin to see a difference in the things that you're doing. Selling yourself on your ability to perform a job, to achieve a certain objective, telling yourself every day, here I go again, and I got what it takes. This is my day and nothing out here is going to stop me. That brings me to the next thing. It takes courage to act. Part of being hungry when you've been defeated, it takes courage to start over again. I used to do door-to-door -door sales and I was working with another friend of mine and door-to-door -door sales, I mean, it's punishing. It's cruel and unusual punishment. And I was a little boy knocking on the door. Hello, would you like to buy a nice working television set? No money down. No! Bam! They slammed the door in your face. And the friend of mine that was working with me, they slammed the door in his face, and I looked back, and he was going to the car. He said, I can't do this. And he sat down in the car, and he said, you go ahead. I'll be here when you get back. Now, he had a mother and father to take care of him. My mother was ill. I am adopted. I was hungry. I had to go on. I learned something about myself. That when you step into your fears, somebody said, it was Winston Churchill, he said that courage is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. When you step into your fears and continue to push yourself to go on, something happens for you. When you, when you have something you want to do, if you don't develop the courage to do that which has been given you to do, and you spend a lot of time going around trying to convince other people or trying to get their approval, what will happen is that you will lose your nerve and other people will convince you that what you're doing doesn't have any value and you'll give up on your dream. It's an interesting thing about life I've also found that if you don't have the courage to act, sometimes and particularly if you have something special to do, Life will move on you. If, 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 if it were not for life, I would still be a disc jockey. I didn't just leave voluntarily to go to the state legislature. I was fired. I was working on a job, and I came home one day. I was married at the time, and I told my former wife. I said, that guy, Bert, I work for is stupid. She said, if he's so stupid, why does he sign you a paycheck? That night, I could not sleep well. Here was a guy that was controlling my life. I was going through all kind of changes because this man controlled my paycheck. And it was Carlisle who said, truth crushed to earth shall rise again. Winston Churchill said, the truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it, ignorance may deride it, but at the end, there it is. And we know scripture that says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And the truth that I had to come to grips with that I wasn't in charge of my destiny. The truth was that I wasn't giving all that I had. The truth was that there are some things that I wanted to do, but I didn't have the courage to act on those things. And the truth was that Bert Charles was a blessing to me. He made life so miserable for me, I had to start looking at my life differently. I started going to work earlier. I started being the last one to leave there. I started working harder than anybody else. The other guys could not, why would you work so hard, Les? I said, I'm not working for them. I have been cheating, Bert, I thought. I've been cheating myself and my family, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, do it with everything that you have. Develop the habit of giving more than what you're paid for. Develop the habit of, of setting standards that others will be measured by. Someone said, do not go where the path may lead, but go where there's no path and leave a trail. Before April 1954, 
the common belief, the universal belief, because it had been tried again and again and again and people had failed, the belief was that man was not physically capable of breaking the four minute barrier, that he could not run a mile in less than four minutes. That was the belief on the planet. It had never been done. But here's what happened, ladies and gentlemen. Roger Bannister came along and he broke the four minute barrier. Now here's what's significant about that. Since that time, up to this day, over 20,000 people have done it, including high school kids. 20,000 people, what changed? Here's what happened when they got on the track. They knew it had been done. And because they knew it had been done, there was a new belief about this barrier, about this goal that was unreachable. And those 20,000 people got in a race believing knowing in their heart that someone had done it, that it's possible that they could do it. And I'm saying that if you know anybody that had some goal, some dream, something they wanted to do, and they did it, then I'm saying that you know in your heart that if someone has done it, then you can do it, it's possible. And that if someone can make their dream become a reality, that it's, it's possible that you can make your dream become reality. And so as you begin to look at where you want to go, beginning to embrace that, it's possible. I'm blessed and highly favored. I've got a lot going for me. I've got some good stuff in me. And it's possible that I can bring my greatness out here in the universe, that I can do what I want to do. It's possible I can write my own book. I can have my own business. I, I can take the trip and travel around the world. It's possible. I can bounce back from adversity and reinvent my life. It's possible, regardless of where I am, that things can get better for me. It's possible. I'm thinking about two men right here in Chicago who are fairly successful, similar background, educated. They worked for a corporation for many years, and they were among many people that were laid off. Two guys who were very good friends. One went out looking for a job for several weeks, along with the other one, and they faced disappointment and rejection again and again and again. They couldn't find any work, which is the story of many people across this country. One guy stopped. He became discouraged. He stopped going. He stayed home looking at television, became very argumentative and toxic with his wife, drinking beer, getting on the phone, talking to his other negative, unemployed friends, and he just gave up. The other guy kept looking for a job everywhere he could go, every time he could get an opportunity, kept asking people, networking, checking the newspapers every day, kept going everywhere he could, trying to find a job. You have too much education, you're overqualified, you won't be here long enough. He kept going, he kept going. He went to a place and said, look here, I tell you what, if you can't hire me, and I know you can use my talents, abilities, and skills. I don't want to sit home and do nothing. Just, just let me do some volunteer work. You don't have to give me anything, all right? I just want to work. I want to be busy. Guy said, okay, it's on you now, but don't, don't expect me to give you anything. It's okay. This guy came in and worked. He was the first one there. The last one to leave was the best employee there. About four weeks later, one of the top managers quit. They were looking for a replacement. Guess who they selected? This other guy. This guy who was volunteering his time. He got the job. What was the difference between the two men? Eyesight and mind sight. Eyesight is judging on what you see. Judging according to appearances. But mind sight is how you interpret what you see. One guy said, it's not possible, it's over, I'm finished. I can't do it, I can't make it. He surrendered. I've faced rejection again and again, I'm not going anymore. There are no jobs out there. But this other guy, he felt that in spite of the no's and rejections, in spite of how bad the economy is, in spite of what the newspapers are saying, that it's possible that somebody somewhere will give me a job.
He just kept going, thinking it was possible. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? That's what we have to do with our dreams. Because things happen to you in life that you can never, ever anticipate. And many times when those things happen, you want to give up. I remember when I was in broadcasting, when I was a disc jockey, I became very controversial, not only being a disc jockey, but I felt that radio was something that you not only entertain people with, but you also empower them, you educate them. And I got fired. I didn't just leave, they fired me. They took my microphone. I thought that was who I was. No, no, ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't. I had to do something else. And I didn't know what else I could do. See, here's what I'm looking at. What are the uses for your life right now that you haven't even reached for yet? See, I believe that when you don't have enough encouragement to act on your dreams or ideas or you're not enlightened enough, that life will act on you. Some decisions are major decisions. And also there are a lot of small decisions that we don't make. That they tax our minds, they drain our energy. They create a lot of anxiety and nervousness and mental torment because we don't take care of it. We decide not to decide, which is a decision. Deciding to decide, to act, is a major, major challenge for all of us at different points in different areas of our lives. And there are things that happen to us along the way experiences that we have that prevent us from working through the mental block of acting of doing those things that we know we ought to do and so what I want you to think about is what is there that you know you need to do that you want to do this but for some reason or another you've been holding back for some reason or another, you just have not been able to gather your nerves or be able to work through the procrastinating or putting it off or justifying or blaming. Some reason or another, you just haven't done it. And you know you ought to do this. You really want to do this, but you don't know why you haven't done it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand, please. Okay, then I've got company here this evening. I'm not talking to myself. Now, first of all, we know that this is not easy. Because in order to begin to reinvent your life, you've got to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort. That you really have got to put all of yourself into it. It's very challenging to act, to do those things. There are times when you're looking at it and you say, I, I know I need to do this, but I don't feel like it. I don't want to do it. I know I need to do it, yet leave me alone. No. I don't want to do it. So what do we do? What are those things that, that cause us to do like that? I think that among the things that prevent us from acting is the fear of failure. And if you've already failed, you don't want to fail again. The pain of that, the disappointment, the fear of loss is another thing. Because many times when we do those things that we know we need to do, we feel that we might lose somebody that we love very much and care about. We don't want to hurt anybody. Many of us don't act because we want other people's approval. We want everybody to like us and to accept us. And that's not possible. Many of us don't do the things that we want to do and don't act because of lack of self-confidence. We don't believe enough in ourselves. I have a friend who's been working on a job where she's miserable, talented, want to go to another place that she can do what she wants to do and make the kind of money that she would like to make and had some offers. But because of her fear and her lack of self-confidence of things might not work out, she won't take a chance on herself. So there she is spending eight hours a day, five days a week, and she's miserable. She hates to go to work. They're not paying her what she's worth. She knows it. But yet and still, she won't do that which she knows she must do, and it's wearing her out. There are a lot of people that their jobs are making them sick because they won't act. You check out the absenteeism and the people that are depressed. You see them coming to work angry. How are you doing? I don't know. Just leave me alone.
It's not even nine o'clock yet. You're talking about good morning. There are days you go to work, you want to just keep driving past the job. You know, you don't want to stop because it's not in sync with who you are. But you haven't acted. Have another friend. This guy's brilliant. He's a business consultant. He helped a lot of people get their business started. And people come to him because they know he's knowledgeable. But this guy won't start his own business. Now he's very smart. He can do it. Everybody believes in him except him. And he's so smart he's talked himself out of it. Well, the numbers aren't right. And so there are many reasons why we don't act. There are other things though that affect us is that not wanting to take personal responsibility. We want somebody else to do it. And we, many times we pick up our inability to do certain things from people that we love, people that we admire. We identify with them and we live in the context of their ideas, their opinions, and their life patterns. We buy into it unconsciously. My mother is a pack rat. She keeps everything. She doesn't throw anything away. And I have unconsciously picked that up. Now, my mother never said, let me show you how to keep everything less and just clutter things. <laughs> I unconsciously picked that up. Many times, unconsciously, we try to honor the people we love by being like them. By the same token, I realized something about myself when I had some major decisions to make and I found myself acting like my mother. See, my mother's the kind of person that when she has a problem with one of the other foster children that she adopted, she won't confront them. She will call me. <laughs> Les, why don't you tell Linda to move? She's lazy, she won't go to work, she runs the street all day and then she comes home and wants to sleep all day and I think she's doing drugs. I said, but mama, why don't you tell Linda that? I bought the house for you. I told you when she wanted to come home, don't let a grown person come there and take care of them. You let her in, well after all she's my child. Mama, then you handle that. When I tell her to leave, she say, mama say I can say, mama can I say, and you tell her yes, and then you call me and say, she's still here. <laughs> Why worry me with this? So mama hasn't developed the courage to act on that. Some people won't act until there's a crisis situation. When Linda started stealing from Mama and took her social security check to get some drugs, Mama got some courage to say, get out of here. <laughs> and don't ever come back. But she wouldn't do it until then. And see, we don't have to wait until a crisis situation. I have a friend that has been having a challenge with losing weight, but has been dealing with that challenge. And for the past 40 years, he's always seemed like weighed over 235 pounds. And so he said, man, I just can't lose weight. I'm big boned. I said, bud, I've never seen any fat skeletons. No, you need to act on your health. You can change this. You don't have to go to your grave fat. We're all digging early graves with our teeth. We don't have to do this. They need to have a support group around M&M peanuts. You want a support group on something and throw Snickers in there too. <laughs> Bud and I can tell you about the help we need with that. So what happened with Bud though, he became ill a few weeks ago. See Bud in the last few weeks has lost more weight than he's ever lost, even when we were competing with each other, betting a lot of money. But what happened was Bud became diabetic. He went into an insulin shock. He didn't know that he was diabetic. His blood sugar became high. And the doctor said to him, you are diabetic. You're going to have to have insulin shots every day. You're going to have to change your diet. And let me tell you what's going to happen if you don't do what we tell you to do. Number one, there's a possibility that you can become an amputee. Number two, you can go blind. Three, you can become impotent. But say, help me. Like those guys with, with Paul, when, when Paul broke out of jail, those guys say, tell me what I must do to be saved. <laughs> Bud were to be saved. I say, Bud, you want one of my peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? No. I say, Bud, I can't believe you're eating vegetables, man. 
You're exercising. He said, that's right, a jogging in place too. Now he had the ability to do it before, but there's some people, it takes that kind of crisis to bring them into reality in order for them to act in their own best interest. Some people have to hit rock bottom in order to rise. I don't know why. You want to begin to look out on your life and what you want for you. And I think that when we begin to focus in the area of what does it take for us to act, I think we can say events can inspire us to act, like that particular event in his life. Circumstances, a friend of mine, he wanted to do something and, and he just did not have the motivation and the drive and the confidence within himself. But his circumstances change overnight through an acquisition of the company that he worked for. He lost his job through the inspiration of desperation. He had to act. See, life also are things that can inspire us to act. See, we don't have the courage, and that's what it takes, courage. It takes guts to do that which you know you need to do. If you don't have the courage to act, life many times will move on you and make you act. Whatever you do, you want to develop technical mastery. You want to be the best at what you do. You want to master it. See, part of, of, of self-motivation is you've got to find something that gives you a strong sense of competence. Well, you become known for that. You develop a reputation of being good at doing that. You set some high personal standards for yourself. You're not competing with anybody else. You're just unfolding yourself to be the best person that you could be. That you want to give the best quality service that you can give because that is a statement about who you are. The other thing that's the key to self-motivation is recognize the fact that you're going to get into some slumps, recognize the fact that you're going to encounter a great deal of failure in life. It goes with the territory. But in the face of that, you want to be relentless. When you want something, you don't expect everybody to say, oh, oh, you want this? Oh, great, we want to give this to you. You're such a nice person. You're doing it for your family, aren't you? Great. No, no, life isn't like that. No, many doors will be closed in your face. Many loans that you will want. And they'll say, no, you don't have enough collateral. You don't have enough credit. And most people will give up. But you've got to decide that I'm going to be fearless. I refuse to be denied, and I'm going to go all out. I'm going to be relentless. I don't care how many no's I encounter. I like something Isaiah Thomas said when he's getting ready for a basketball game. He said, I'm going to either shoot us in or shoot us out, but I'm not going to not do anything. And that's the way to go. You can't make a basket unless you shoot the ball. You can't hit a home run unless you take a swing at it. Most people won't even take a swing. Well, I probably won't make it anyhow. That's the conversation within. They probably won't give it to me anyhow. If you want something, you've got to be relentless. You've got to decide, I deserve this and I'm going to have it. And you go all out to get it. That drives you. The next thing is that when you want something out of life, you've got to be willing to go into action. Don't wait around for things to be just right. Don't wait for things to be perfect. Don't wait for the ideal situation. It will never be ideal. There will always be a reason. Well, as soon as the children grow up, or as soon as I pay my bills, or as soon as I get my divorce, <laughs> all kinds, as soon as I get enough money together, do what you can, where you are with what you have, and never be satisfied. A lot of people never take a chance in life. They don't want to take any chances. They want the situation to be ideal. See, that's not walking by faith. That's walking by sight. If I can see it, I'll do it. No, 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 no. A lot of people say, if I can see it, I'll believe it. No, 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 no. If you believe it, you can see it. And don't be disturbed because no one else can see it. That's not unusual. That is ordinary. 
But because you want some different kind of results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. If you want unreasonable results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you don't judge according to appearances. Part of being unreasonable, you can see it because you believe it. That's part of being unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you're like Paul who said, you must have the faith to call forth those things that be not as though they were. That's part of being unreasonable. Most people won't do that. Most people say, call me when you get it together. The other thing is that one of the keys to self-motivation that empowers you is that you want to find a cause larger than yourself. Find something that you can contribute to. Find something that you can make a difference because you can. Part of what feeds your larger vision, part of what gives you a reason for being, part of what gives you your life is being able to give something back. Say, I can't afford to give anything. You can't afford not to give. Give your time. Give your talent. There's nothing just to go over there and lick envelopes. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going over there. It's part of my tithing in the universe. Once you develop that, that special sense of mission, and that's what you develop when you're part of a larger cause than yourself, it drives you. You don't need an alarm clock to get up in the morning. You have special power. You'll go places and folk will like to be around you. They will know there's something different about you.